Hello and welcome to the Oak Island Research Channel today uh, for sharing something I found today uh, that is triggering my imagination and I'm puzzled and I'd like to share it with you. It all started with my former video name Flashback and on that video um, Kirk De Pierre, hello Kirk was challenging me or challenging us on this discovery that indeed the text on the left hand side of the map, which I'm going to show you now, this part, uh, Peter suggests that the alignment, and you can see some alignment, some, you know, you can cut those and reorganizing letters in a word, you could reread uh, some of the text and reinterpret it which is basically what I did at the beginning uh, a year ago uh, when I found, first of all, the hole under the trap. They ask, ask you to put the hole under the trap. And when you do that and you reread it, you've got under uh, la trappe le trou, which in phonetics in French means grab the hole. It was the eye of the fish, etc., etc. You can refer back to the earlier videos. And Kirk is, again, reworking on this, trying to find meanings and I wrote you, Kirk, that uh, from a French uh, semantic point of view, I can't um, create a meaningful meaning from what you propose, but I think there's something in there. You're on the right way. And first of all, I want to show you something just for you, Kirk. I was working on this this afternoon during my <laughs> work break, and I found for, you know, that nous yeah that word which you know I, I'm, I still have a nightmares today a year after and um, any explanation that I read so far did not satisfy me and I'm not saying I've, I found the solution but I found this look it seems there's a something hidden in the text let me use that color here the only place in the whole map you can at least get the right part here, Nustria is here. N of Nu, then you go up, you take the U, then you go left, you get the S, and your Tria is here at triangle. So it's almost like a pattern that proposes you to do it in this direction. And you see, huh? N, U, S, Tria. Uh, tria with the A. And I check on the map, it's the only place you can create Nustria. Uh, there's no other word. So I, of course, try to reapply this to other parts and it didn't work. So I think that's not correct. But I still believe, and I, I guess Kirk believes that too now, that there is more things hidden in that text and the way it is uh, laid out on the paper. Why do we have this alignment that creates the word East? Why do we have this alignment that creates the word une, feminine for un, which means a, the article? Uh, it's the only two places. I, I checked a lot of other. It's this, this strange. Is it a coincidence or not? Maybe someday I'll, I'll show you. I prepared a video some time ago where I'm studying the um, musical rhythm of those texts. Uh, le trou sous la trappe, la sous pape is the same sound. It's like a rhyme, but it's inconclusive. But everything on the whole map is based on rhymes of three, five or six syllables. But I can't give a comprehensive meaning or an explanation to it. But Kirk, this is for you, a little present from me. If you work those out, you can recreate Nustria. I try to find the Dapre. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the app here, APP, is this one, right? That's that's what I believe. And I think you need to take air. There's only two places you get the sound air. It's ter, and you got it again. I'm looking at my map, um, which is where the other one? Atterrissage, ter, again. But again, are they just uh, coincidence of sounds or are they meaningful and for a purpose? I can't tell. So that was just what happened this afternoon. But I went, Further, I was this afternoon daydreaming about all this and I went back to the top right part of the text where it talks about Rochefoucauld. 
And I'm thinking, okay, uh, maybe, you know, it's just research and hit, try to hit things and trying to type in Google Rochefoucauld and Graal. Don't ask me why I put that in. Um, you know, the Graal might be associated with Oak Island. It's one of the many possibilities. We don't even know what the Graal is. And Rochefoucauld, you know, I don't know why I typed this, but the result was quite interesting. I discovered the one in pink that I hid there, the Rochefoucauld Grail, which is another spelling, I think, in English of Graal in France, in French, is a four volume, 14th century illuminated manuscript. Okay, so wait, just, I was just hitting out of the blue and I found that there is a book from the 14th century, um, illuminated meaning with pictures and drawing manuscript and its name is Rochefoucauld Grail. Like, okay, interesting, you know, coincidences again. So I went to look for more information on this. Is it this one? It is not, excuse me. It is, well, the Wikipedia page. Four volume century, three volumes, etc. Created by Flandre or Artois, that's for the uh, lie, uh, the, uh, the, the, the picture. And possibly for the French nobleman Guy, Guy VII, Baron de Rochefoucauld, and that's the years, 1300. So I started to do some research now. And where is it? Uh, I hope I did not delete it. No, it's there. So I find this page, which is a history of information, and it explains a very, very interesting thing. The Rochefoucauld Grail was written and illuminated in the Flanders and Artois by the same theme of artists, blah, blah. It's for Guy, seventh Baron de la Rochefoucauld. It is one of the principal manuscripts of the greatest romance of the Middle Ages with 107 miniatures illustrating warfare, chivalry, etc. And then hang on the edge of the seat now. It contains the Lancelot Grail cycle in French prose, the oldest and most comprehensive version of the legends of King Arthur and the Holy Grail. Wow. So we all heard about, you know, Camelot and the round table and the, and the knights and the Grail and Lancelot and Percival, which was also associated another night. Percival leads us to Rosicrucian somehow, but I'm not going to go that direction tonight. Uh, so we have that book and that book that, you know, I knew it, exist, it existed from, from, from when I was a kid at school. We all know about in Europe about the Holy Grail and, and the King Arthur, but we don't know the support where, where the document comes from and the history. And, and it seems the main major book relating that story the most comprehensive version is called the, La the Rochefoucauld Grail. Not the La Rochefoucauld, but the Rochefoucauld Grail. And it was for Baron de La Rochefoucauld. By the way, when I was reading this, 100% of the time when we talk about uh, La Rochefoucauld in books or dictionaries or whatever, it's always de La Rochefoucauld, which is not the case in the map. In the map, it's François La Rochefoucauld. And that's not his name. His name was François de La Rochefoucauld. Uh, so maybe the de was not useful in the riddle they proposed us. Indeed, it makes one more syllable and wouldn't be uh, then uh, possible to do a verset, an Alexandrine from it. So maybe that's the reason on purpose they ditched the de in the riddle they proposed us. But anyways, that Guy La Rochefoucauld, let's have a look about that Guy La Rochefoucauld. Where is he? The Rochefoucauld here. So that's the house of La Rochefoucauld. And the Guy are here. So we're talking about Guy the Sixth, uh, Seventh, sorry, Seventh. Guy the Seventh, here he is. Baron de la Rochefoucauld served King Philip against the country of Flanders, excommunicated. Interesting. I need to find out why. Uh, founder of the Couvent des Carmes de Rochefoucauld, killed next to the King of France at the Battle of Poitiers, married Agnès de Culan. So Guy obviously ordered the manufacturing of that book. I don't know anything about Guy. And you see the François Rochefoucauld we're talking about are somewhere in there and there's been a bunch of them, right? But Rochefoucauld is a old French family 
and the name and the house started in 952. That's very, very old. Okay, so that's the La Rochefoucauld. And now I've got that book. And I, I hear that the book was <laughs> sold in 2010 at a Sotheby's, or Sotheby's uh, auction uh, for two million pounds. And there's a catalog description. So I went to the catalog description trying to learn more. Okay, it's been sold two million British pounds. Great. And it explains and it explains. So I'm going to cut it short for you because we're going to use some of that text. Basically, what this is, uh, we have here some of the uh, picture. I am, I, we can't read. You see, that's, that's the text, unreadable. And even if I magnify it, it's in such old French. It's in French that I would have a lot of problem reading it with my modern 1,000 year later French, later French. So that's not the point. We understand what the story is about. It is a story of how the Grail ended up in or went through England and the story of King Arthur and Lancelot and Percival. Okay, let's carry on our journey. Here, the author of this website offers us some of the uh, pictures that are part of the book. And I think I've got others. Uh, if I, I messed up my presentation. It's not this one. It's not this one. Uh, I think I closed it. Okay, never mind. I got others picture. You can find them on the net. But what interests us here is, are these pictures. Part of the 107 miniatures illustrating, right? I want to show you something that blew my mind. If I can find my presentation now. So I, I copy and paste the pictures into a PowerPoint so we can zoom and work with them easily. So these are pictures and illustration from that book. And I, I, wanna, I want you to notice something. Please pay attention to the trees. Uh, and again, those pictures illustrate chapters of that book. And that's the whole story about King Archer and Percival and, and that house and Camelot and etc. I don't I don't know the detail of the story now. I think I'm gonna have to reread that the story is somehow. But pay attention to the trees. You see this tree, the way they drew it uh, in green, and we can see leaves, and we understand it's a tree. It's almost naive um, uh, drawings, right? But okay, that's a tree. Let's go down here, bottom left corner, same trees. They got green um, logs and they got leaves. Easy to see. Let's carry on. Here again, I got leaves in green and now um, uh, the, uh, the bark, uh, yeah, I think it's the word in English, is in, is in brown and not green anymore. Okay. And then I went down and I saw the last one at the bottom corner, or oh, I over zoomed it, is this one. Let's stop a minute on this one. This is Folio 117 V, 93 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So they are small pictures. The Duke who beheaded King Lancelot. So the Duke is here. He beheaded King Lancelot, reaching into the well to grasp the head to the left of the headless body. When I saw that, and I think I got a disease now, I'm seeing Oak Island everywhere. Please notice that first the tree color is in blue. OK, maybe the color tainted out and vanished with the years. Maybe. OK, fair enough. Look at this tree. It's the only tree that's got two. Let me change color here so we can see better. We can see two. Um, how can I call them bulbs or two part one here, one here, right? All the other pictures of trees are, are just one single tree, one single, one single per tree, one, one, right? And this one's got two. Oops, sporting. When I saw that, my eye, <laughs> it's like, this looks like Oak Island, the elephant, before it was reunited and the swamp was created. And the swamp would be around here. Am I making that up? Oh, yes, I am. 
but it's very strange. Second thing, no leaves. There are no leaves, contrary to the other pictures. It's like there is a reference lines, right? Very strange. Why all the others, they put leaves in the tree and not this one. And why does it have the bloody shape of our island? I'll show you that in a minute. Let's carry on what's strange on this picture. It's the story of somebody who's under a tree. Would it be an oak tree? And there's a hole. And in the, in the well, it's a well, it's a pit. And he's grasping the head of Lancelot, who's beheaded. That... <laughs> I've heard that story before, but nobody was beheaded. I heard a story about an oak tree and a pit underneath on an island that used to be two islands. Weird, huh? Coincidence? And geez, I don't know. It's strange. And Rochefoucauld name pops in and, and Graal name pops in. Let's carry on. It took me a lot of time to understand that this was the head. I, I didn't get it, but the hair here, the crown on top, that's the crown and and the hair again here and that's the nose and the eye so maybe now you see it better and he's grasping grabbing the uh, the head of lancelot in that well but when i first look at it i didn't recognize the head the first thing that came to my mind when i saw this was the american continent as it was known in 1200 or 1300 it was the European continent and the African continent. That's what I first saw. I didn't understand the face for, for like five minutes when I saw this. And look where the finger is pointing if this is the Americas. is pointing at something that may look Labrador and Nova Scotia. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm pushing it. Okay, I agree. I admit I'm pushing it. But since I'm nuts, crazy, and one thing I noticed also is bloody hell. Okay, he's bending over, but look at that sword. It's exactly horizontal. And you know how horizontal, how, how much we like horizontal things now with Michael. So this is what I did. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> that's a satellite picture of Oak Island. And that shape here, and that shape here, <laughs> kind of similar. And you have the uh, bump here, and you have the bump here. Right. And, and remember, a thousand years ago, the island may have looked a little bit different. And um, this part here would be this part here. But maybe it was like this at the time. And, and there you get the cut. Now, mind you, uh, if the swamp is like here, the island probably was looking like this. And this one was probably looking like this. Uh, sorry, like this. They don't come right at the edge of the of the uh, of the swamp, of course. So. That's why you would have a vertical parallel and, 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 and on top of that, you got that angle where Fred Nolan built his house here, if that was really the island. I don't know. It's just so strange. And it's like, why no leaves? Why drawing our attention to those, this tree with two uh, pieces and no, no leaf and the color of the bark is different. And then I apply my good old signature just to test. And what more natural to align the east-west line with what seems to be an east-west line with the sword? That's what I found. I found that the intersection of the cross is where the finger is pointing, showing you something. And interesting, the angle here brings us exactly to the tangent of the tree or the island and the head. It doesn't cross anything. Voila, I don't know. Again, I'm going to start studying a bit more because this is talking about the Grail. This is, the, I mean, um, um, Percival was one of the, uh, I think it was a nick, not a nickname, an alias, or I, it's got to do with the Rosicrucian, but I need to restudy and reopen my old books. The shape, the fact that uh, <laughs> that whole manuscript was ordered by a La Rochefoucauld. Wow, that's again coincidences. I'm not claiming anything here, all right? I'm not saying anything, but it's again a very, very strange coincidence. But uh, that was my discovery of the day. Uh, thank you, Kirk, and thank you guys for, you know, guys and girls, of course, uh, for, you know, pushing ideas to us and, and making us react. It's, uh, 
it's interesting. I, I, I'll get back to you on this story because there's something in there, I think. Take care, everyone. Have fun. Be safe. Bye-bye.